for the first hour, we have some uh, music news, music industry news to discuss. You know, I love this stuff. I'm a music industry nerd, and I I do some things uh, in the industry, and I I have for a long time. But um, we were talking last week. I think it was last week. Was it last week or the week before? I have to be honest with you. It it all blurs together. But um, no, I think it was last week we were talking about Oasis and this uh, debacle. We have an update on this. Well, and it relates to another issue happening in the music industry. But um, (laughs) so Oasis tickets went on sale. It's the first time they're touring in 15 years. The Gallagher brothers, Lowell, I'm sorry, not Lowell. Noel and Liam. I do that once in a while. I, I uh, create amalgams of words. I, I combined uh, uh, Noel and Liam into Lowell. I'll just call them Lowell. So Lowell actually managed to stop arguing enough to say, let's go make some money. <laughs> that's, how the, uh, that's how people who are cynical about it are talking about it, right? Oh, this is just a money grab. Oasis is, uh, they're, they're coming for our cash. They just want to make some money. Um, now, that's not how I think about it necessarily. I mean, uh, again, uh, I, I do understand that that's uh, very often uh, a purpose of, of doing this, but, um, but I also am a fan of Oasis, although it's funny. So back in the day, back in the 90s, when Wonderwall was on the radio every five minutes, I actually really liked it. That Wonderwall, I thought was such a great song. And I still think it's a great song, but if I hear it now, I'm like, eh, I'm over it. Oh, I was over it a long time ago. Acquiesce is my favorite uh, Oasis song, which was actually a B-side. Uh, but anyway, I'm, I think it's cool. I mean, I'm not going to go spend gobs of money. I don't know if they've even put any U.S. tour dates on sale. I know they've got a bunch of U.K. dates. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to go see them because I don't want to pay all that money. Uh, and uh, it's, it's going to be expensive. <laughs> it already is expensive because tickets went on sale in the UK and that's what set off this whole um, controversy around the ticket sales themselves. But anyway, so Oasis, no matter how you feel about them, love them, hate them, they're kind of polarizing. I, I've always been a fan, uh, but I also understand, and again, as someone who's uh, done things in the industry, I um, I have kind of a, you know, I, I can look at it both as a fan and as a business, I can see it from both perspectives. So yeah, maybe it is a money grab. I don't, uh, you know, but, but it's a business. You got to make money, right? You got to make a living. You know, these guys probably spend a lot. (laughs) They just seem, well, at least uh, Liam does uh, probably spend a lot. Noel always struck me as more down to earth of the two, but uh, I'm sure Liam has uh, quite the lifestyle anyway, but put all that aside, regardless of how you feel about it. So we were talking on the show last week about tickets went on sale and the websites were crashing. Uh, I say websites plural because obviously, you know, Ticketmaster, which is owned by Live Nation, they put the tickets on sale. Nobody could get them because the site kept crashing, but also the secondary sites were crashing. And then Oasis's management put out a statement saying, actually, don't even buy these tickets on secondary sites because those will be canceled. Those are not authorized. And we got into this a little bit last week, Jenny and I talking about how, you know, you've got when a big tour like this goes on sale. So you've got Ticketmaster, which sells the tickets. But very often what happens is for, and I think a lot of people are probably pretty savvy to this already, but the reason that something can go on sale and then it sells out like immediately. I'm sure people probably assume, well, that's because of the internet. You know, that, that didn't happen pre internet for those of us who are old enough to remember, you know, when you would have to actually go and stand in line somewhere to buy tickets, but you know, things would sell out quickly, which is why if it was a big tour that you really wanted to see, you'd have to go and stand in line. You know, like Jenny has told stories about, you know, her, I think her and her mom standing in line for uh, Prince tickets and like camping out overnight or something or being there for hours when Prince was touring. Um, but then, so the internet comes along, <laughs> for lack of a better way of putting it, and everything's available online, so things sell out instantly. And yes, uh, because in theory, you know, 
thousands, tens, hundreds of thousands, potentially millions of people can go and try to buy these tickets um, immediately once they go online in the digital age, uh, so to speak. But there's another element to that. Very often, these tickets are bought up by scalpers. And I don't mean, when I say scalper, I don't mean the guy standing out in front of the venue trying to sell you a ticket to a sold out show because the show is sold out. But uh, this random guy has tickets that he's willing to sell you at a premium cash only. I mean, scalpers, these services, these ticketing sites that buy in bulk these tickets and then resell them at a, at a profit that goes on all the time. Um, there are those who have tried to push back on it. Um, trying to find ways to prevent that from happening. Uh, but it still goes on. And then, of course, you've also got the other element of Ticketmaster itself. Uh, some people think that, for example, the Live Nation Ticketmaster merger never should have been approved by the government. That gets into a whole other thing. So, so you know, a lot of people are dissatisfied with Ticketmaster itself as an entity. Um, remember back in the day, again, this was, yeah, this must have been in the 90s or early 2000s when Pearl Jam was kind of the first to say, hey, we don't want, even want to deal with Ticketmaster anymore. We don't like the way they do business. We don't like the way uh, the fans are kind of getting the shaft. And uh, so they started working with smaller, you know, in various markets around the country, they started working with these smaller market ticketing agencies, which didn't really work out that great. And in the end, Pearl Jam had to give in, had to capitulate and go back to working with Ticketmaster. It's it's just the reality of it. Um, so... So you've got all of that, and then you've got this new element, and this we did not talk about last week. But again, it it is part of this whole story with Oasis and these tickets is the dynamic pricing. Now, for those of you who don't know, you may have heard the term. Some of you will know. Some of you will not know what this is. But dynamic pricing is this concept where, um, well, you know, Basic free market economics, right? Supply and demand. When supply is low, demand is high, things cost more money. Well, this concept has been applied to tickets and, and Ticketmaster uses it where, okay, so if demand is high for a show and supply is low, only so many tickets available, those tickets will automatically increase in price. There's even been, I who was it? There, there was a fast food restaurant chain that tried to do this. And I, I want to say it was Wendy's. Um, they either tried it in some of their locations or they, they were testing it in maybe one location and they were thinking about rolling it out nationally or something. I don't remember all the details, but they, they, they tried to do some sort of dynamic pricing concept where at, at busy times of day, the food would cost more. But I, I think they probably pulled the plug on that pretty quickly. I think it was Wendy's who tried to do this. But anyway, so this has been done with Ticketmaster. And that factors into the Oasis debacle, as it were, because now Ticketmaster is being investigated about the dynamic pricing. Um, now, if you're a ticket buyer, you may not like this very much. Um, you might long for the days when... Tickets would go on sale and you know what the price is and you just go and you buy the tickets at the price that you're expecting them to be because that's what they're announced at. And that, that is over. You know, I mean, if you're buying uh, tickets to a smaller, sh like for example, if you're buying tickets to go see John Pusat Dart at the Rex theater on Friday night, I don't think those prices are going to change. Right. You know that, but, but, but when you're a ticket master, uh, and you can afford all this technology to control the prices and everything. You know, you can do whatever you want. I mean, Ticketmaster, it is truly a monopoly. They can do whatever they want. Uh, but that doesn't mean that they can do whatever they want without uh, some consequences. So let's look at this. Again, the newest wrinkle in the, uh, what, what did I say I'm calling them? Lowell? Lowell Gallagher. I should, if you're just joining us, I should clarify. It's an amalgam of Noel and Liam. Because apparently I have difficulty saying Noel and Liam, so it's easier to just say Lowell. Um, 
they are almost indistinguishable in terms of, I mean, they don't look exactly alike, but if you listen to an interview with them, you know what's funny about Oasis back in the 90s when they first got big? That first album definitely maybe really blew up. Uh, I remember seeing interviews with them on MTV, and MTV would actually, uh, they would actually subtitle the interviews. Obviously, the Gallaghers were speaking English in the interviews, but their accents were such that you, you almost couldn't understand them. <laughs> so MTV would actually subtitle the interviews. It was, it was funny. Um, and I don't know if they were doing it to be funny or kind of doing it to be funny, but it was funny. They can be difficult to understand. By the way, Noel Gallagher is very funny too. He's got, I don't think Liam's particularly funny, but Noel uh, has a very dry sense of humor that I like. Anyway, okay. So here's the newest wrinkle. And this is from musicbusinessworldwide.com. UK competition regulator launches investigation into Ticketmaster over Oasis ticket sale. So now the government's involved. Uh, says here, the UK's Competition and Markets Authority, CMA, has launched an investigation into Live Nation-owned ticketing giant Ticketmaster. The reason for the investigation... Uh, last Saturday's on sale for Oasis's 2025 UK. Actually, what was the date on this article? September 5th. Okay, so it is referring to last Saturday. So it's referring to the on sale that happened one week ago. Um, for Oasis's 2025 UK and Ireland stadium tour, including, quote, how so-called dynamic pricing may have been used, unquote, the CMA said in a statement on September 5th. The competition watchdog says it plans to scrutinize, quote, excuse me, uh, whether the sale of Oasis tickets by Ticketmaster may have breached consumer protection law, unquote. Because again, like I was saying, not everyone thinks that uh, the dynamic pricing is right or ethical. And, and I'm not saying that I have a problem with it. I'm just saying, you know, well, apparently... It's people in government who are saying, we're not sure that this is the correct way to be uh, treating uh, consumers. I'm, I'm not making a judgment about it. I'm agnostic on, on that part of it. But, but I think it's interesting that, you know, what I do think will be really interesting is, does this stick around, the dynamic pricing concept in terms of tickets? It's already lasted longer than I thought. This has been going on a few years now. When it started, I remember thinking, this isn't going to last. There is going to be so much backlash to this. People are not going to like it. People are used to tickets go on sale. They go on sale for a particular price. If a show isn't selling, rarely will you even see the price go down, right? You rarely see that. You very rarely see discounted tickets. In fact, you're, look, if you're a promoter and you've got a big show in an arena, say, right? and tickets aren't moving, you'll give away tickets before you'll lower the price. That's, that's true. Um, if, you've got, if you've got a show in a 10,000-seat arena, again, this is if you're the promoter putting on the show. Not, not the, the band's management has no say in this, or, or certainly not the record label, nobody, or, or even the venue. You're the promoter, and you're deciding, you're making decisions based on how these tickets are moving, if it's soft, meaning you're not selling enough tickets, you're not selling as many as you thought you were, what you'll do is, very often, is they call it papering the room, which means because what you don't want at the end of the day is a half-empty arena. So if you're in a 10,000-seat venue and you're only on track to sell 5,000 tickets, you don't want that. It just doesn't look good, right? To have a 10,000 seat arena that's only half full. So if you were thinking you're going to sell 8,000, right? So you'd be at 80% capacity. Sorry if I'm getting too into the weeds, but I know a lot of people in the industry listen to the show. So if you're only at, you think you're going to be at 80% capacity, you're going to sell 8,000 out of 10,000 seats. And, but it's looking like you're only going to hit 5,000. You don't want a half-empty arena. So you will give away tickets to that show. It happens all the time. Um, you, you'll, you'll be contacting 
every radio station you can find that you think might be interested in doing a ticket giveaway, um, you'll be giving them out to businesses and saying, here, uh, give these to your employees or do some kind of contest. Do whatever you want with them. Just make sure people from your company show up at the show. You'll do anything that you can to get more people in the door. And at that point, it's all about the optics of it. It's all about what it looks like. Because you don't want to put on a show in a 10,000-seat arena that's literally half full and then have that, you know, have people hear about it, have people seen on social media, tickets of a half-empty arena, uh, just all of that. You, you want it to look like everything that you do is successful. So you're going to paper, again, it's it's called papering the room. You're, you're going to try to get as many people in there as you can. And if that means, because you have nothing to lose, Right. If you're not going to sell those tickets, you might as well give them away because the show's going to happen no matter what. And you're going to have to pay everybody no matter what. If you're the promoter, you've got financial obligations tied up in this. You might take a loss on that show, but you might as well get as many as many people in the door as you can. So at least it looks good. So um, the point being what you'll rarely see, I'm can't say never, but what you'll rarely see is a promoter say, okay, these tickets, they're not, they're not moving at $60. So I think we're going to drop the price to 50 or to 40 and see if we can sell some more. You just don't see that. They'd rather paper the room than lower the price on the tickets. Reason being, if you lower the price on the tickets, again, not using Ticketmaster's dynamic pricing. I'm just saying if you decide as the promoter, you're going to lower the price. Um, now you're you're risking, well, first of all, you're risking alienating the people who already bought the tickets at the higher price. So you don't want them going on social media saying, hey, I got ripped off. But, but although that's probably not that likely. But what you also don't want to happen is, what if you lower the price, but it doesn't it doesn't juice the sales? Now you're taking an even bigger loss. You could lower the price, but it doesn't increase your sales. The same number of people who were probably going to buy tickets end up buying the tickets anyway, regardless, right? So they would have bought the tickets anyway if they were still $10 more or $20 more. So you lower the price, you still only sell 5,000 tickets. You're still, you've still got a half empty room and you've actually made less money. So it's not worth the risk. So the best thing to do, uh, at least in my experience and from what I've seen, is in that situation, you leave the ticket price as it is and you just hope that, <laughs> you know, you get a lot of walk up, right? You know, people come and showing up at, on the day of and, um, and you have, and you try to paper the room. You try to give out some tickets too. Um, but this dynamic pricing has changed everything. So again, getting back to this article, over 10 million fans from 158 countries are confirmed to have queued up on Saturday, August 31 to buy tickets to the tour. Yeah. So it was, yeah. So like I said, it was last, last weekend that the tickets went on sale. Two additionally, additional uh, Wembley Stadium shows have been added due to, quote, unprecedented demand during the sale, which Oasis said in a press release Saturday, quote, saw all ticket platforms struggling to cope, resulting in immense frustration and disappointment for fans who missed out after queuing for many hours, unquote. By the way, the same thing happened uh, in the United States, if you remember, with Taylor Swift. Uh, same thing, you know, people were frustrated. They were trying to get, I remember seeing uh, people on social media, just, you know, in tears over it. They were so desperately trying to get Taylor Swift tickets and, uh, and couldn't because, you know, you wait, you log on to the website, you're in the queue, you're waiting and waiting and waiting. And then eventually something happens, you know, maybe the site crashes or, you know, there's something, something goes wrong. Uh, maybe your computer suddenly wants to update <laughs> and it shuts itself down and restarts or whatever it is, right? You know, after you've already invested hours of your time and then you, now you're you're at the back of the line or now you log back in and the show's sold out. So, you know, so this um, this is not in and of itself unprecedented, but um, to put the extent of that demand into context, 
Wembley, where Oasis are now set to play seven of the tour's 19 dates, has a capacity of 90,000, which means that the band would need to perform 111 dates at the stadium to meet the demand for next year's tour. Uh, The following Wednesday, in the same press release announcing the two additional Wembley shows, Oasis uh, publicly distanced themselves from the decisions that led to the use of Ticketmaster's dynamic pricing tools during the sale. Yeah, so a lot of this went on where now Oasis, the Gallagher brothers, Lowell, I'm calling them, I've I've, uh, melded them together into one person, Lowell Gallagher. Uh, It's just easier. Economy of language, my friends. Um, So now fans are pointing at them and going, you guys are bad, you guys are greedy, all this. In reality, it really doesn't have much to do with them, but they're going to take the blame. Of course, they're the, the public faces of this. I'm, I have a hunch that they probably don't care that much because, you know, they they're extremely rich and famous and, you know, there's... <laughs> You know, it probably doesn't affect that much. I I don't think a mean comment from a fan is going to hurt uh, the Gallagher brothers. Uh, but but that is you know they're they're the face of it, so it it's uh, they're going to take the brunt of of the the anger and ire uh, from people. Uh, it says here informed sources speaking to MBW, which is Music Business Worldwide. This uh, this is a great website. Uh, this week estimated that 10 to 15% of the 1.4 million tickets sold over the weekend were, quote, dynamically priced on Ticketmaster, meaning the price automatically adjusts based on supply and demand. Uh, the price for these tickets more than doubled from a face value of around 150 pounds, I assume that's pounds, uh, to an in-demand price tag of around 355, causing fan outcry on social media platforms and much discussion in other media outlets, including MBW on Tuesday. Um, And again, that takes us back to what I was saying before about how long will this last? People don't like the dynamic pricing. They end up feeling taken advantage of, and they end up feeling ripped off. As a free market economist, uh, I'm not an economist, I'm sorry, but as a... uh, But as a... uh, I don't know why I said economist, but as, you know, as someone who believes in uh, free markets, uh, let me put it that way. Uh, I, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not really taking a position one way or the other. It's, it's supply and demand. It's being applied here. It's almost like an auction in a sense, right? But uh, buying these tickets, I, I'm not, I'm not taking a position. I'm going to remain agnostic on it at least for now. But I'm telling you, this could be the nail in the coffin of this particular. Uh, strategy because uh people are you know the last thing you want is your consumers or your fans uh to feel that they've been victimized you know i i saw one comment somebody directed at the gallagher's saying you know i i wouldn't have thought i wouldn't have thought you would be so greedy you know you you uh your fan base is you know kind of working class people and here you are being so greedy and Again, it's but it's not it's not them. I'm not saying they're not greedy. Maybe they are. I don't know. Again, you know, you you get when you get to that level, I mean there's been plenty of, of uh research and studies done on this. When you get to a certain level of fame and money, there is a, a certain almost a sociopathy that sets in, right? Um <laughs> so you know, I'm not saying they're not terrible people. They may be. They may not be. I don't know. Um I'm a fan of their music, but I, if I actually met them, I might be horrified. They say don't meet your heroes. I don't know, but it, it's ultimately not their fault. But but if there's enough outcry over this, over this whole dynamic pricing thing, this might be the beginning of the end of it. Um, so the band's press release said, quote, It needs to be made clear that Oasis leave decisions on ticketing and pricing entirely to their promoters and management, and at no time had any awareness that dynamic pricing was going to be used, unquote. 
Is that satisfactory? Probably from a PR standpoint, probably not. No one's going to believe that. No one who's no one who's angry about this is going to read that statement and say, "Oh, okay. It's really got nothing to do with them." I mean, it, it it's true in a sense, right? But oh, there's a there's a big hole in this though, too. Let me read part of this again. It needs uh, it needs to be made clear that Oasis leave decisions on ticketing and pricing entirely to their promoters and management. One little problem with that. So promoters are people you're in business with, right? The promoter is is the one who, well, the promoter, first of all, takes all the risk. Again, I have experience in this, so I know how this feels. Not on this level, obviously, but, um, you know, the, the promoter's putting on the shows and handling all of that. So you, you are somewhat at a promoter's mercy. The problem is the sentence says, that they leave this to their promoters and management. The and management is a problem to me because that's there's a cop out there. Oh, that's our management. Well, the, the, here's the thing is, management works for the band. The band doesn't work for management. It's not how, you know, it's not, it's not like in the corporate world, you know, when if you have a manager, you work for your manager, right? They're your boss. You know, in the music industry, it's the other way around in that it, if you, if you are an artist and you have a manager, the manager is someone you hire. They work for you. You hire them to run your business, the business of your music. So for the band to say, well, that's not up to us. We leave that to our management. Well, the, the management works for you, dude. <laughs> you know, you can't really pass the buck. You know, they're your employee in a sense. Not literally an employee. They've you know they've got contracts and everything, but you know what I'm saying, you know. So to say, it's one thing to say, I you know you can kind of let it fly a little bit and say, well, it's it's not our fault. It's it's you know we leave that to the promoters. Well, yeah, that's what the promoter does, right? That's their function. But to say and management, well, that's your management is they're your management. You. You can fire your management if you want to. You can tell your management, don't do it this way. It's upsetting our fans. You can tell your management to handle it differently. Okay, so there's more to the statement. Quote, while prior meetings between promoters, Ticketmaster, and the band's management resulted in a positive ticket sales strategy, which would be a fair experience for fans, including dynamic ticketing, to help keep general ticket prices down, as well as reduce uh, touting, uh, the, I don't know, touting? Uh, is that, maybe that's a, a term for, um, that almost sounds like a, might be another term for scalping. Uh, in the United States, we call it scalping. Maybe there they call it touting. I don't know. Um, sorry, I just, I, I don't know what that word means in that, but I assume from the context, it might be another term for scalping. Uh, the execution of the plan failed to meet expectations. All parties involved did their utmost to deliver the best possible fan experience, but due to the unprecedented demand, this became impossible to achieve. Um, I feel like there's a contradiction here. Did anyone else hear a contradiction? Yeah, there's a there's a pretty blatant contradiction, self contradiction in this uh, statement. Um that to me seems glaringly obvious. So let, let's back up a little bit. So the statement opens with, it needs to be made clear that Oasis leave decisions on ticketing and pricing entirely to their promoters and management, and at no time had any awareness that dynamic pricing was to be used. So the band had no idea, according to that paragraph, or that opening statement, that opening sentence, that of the statement, that, Dynamic pricing was to be used, but then they say, um, oh, okay, I'm sorry. No, I was wrong. I was wrong. I retract. There is no, there is no um, contradiction. I thought there was a contradiction because it sounded like they're saying that um, Oasis had no idea. The band had no idea. And then I see this sentence, while, pri uh, while prior meetings between promoter Sigmaster and the band's management resulted in a positive ticket strategy, you know, that everyone thought would be fair and da da da. I thought, I, I, I took that as everyone was involved in that decision. But no, 
uh, that's not correct. The band, the band is not mentioned in that part, so there is no contradiction. I was wrong about that. I uh, apologize. Um, okay, all right. Well, so taking that into account, it's probably the best possible statement that uh, <laughs> you know that it's the best damage control they could do. Let me let me put it that way. It's, it's not going to satisfy people, but uh, it's uh, damage control is is about just doing the best you can with a rough situation. Uh, the CMA said today that, and again, that's the part of the government that uh, does consumer protection in the UK, uh, that the, uh, it is at the initial stage of its investigation. It will now engage with Ticketmaster and gather evidence from various other sources, which, quote, may include the band's management and event organizers, unquote. SJM, Live Nation, MCD, and DF Concerts are promoting the Oasis Tour. Ticketmaster was one of the three sites used along with gigs and tours and sea tickets. The CMA stressed in its statement on Thursday that, quote, it should not be assumed that Ticketmaster has broken consumer protection law, unquote. No, I mean, and from, look, I'm not a legal expert of any kind, and there may be an element to this that I'm missing, but I don't see any anything that makes me say, oh, it sounds like, look, we can talk about this whole dynamic pricing strategy as being kind of dirty business, right? Again, I'm, I'm going to remain agnostic on it for now, but that doesn't mean it's and that anything's illegal about it um, yet, <laughs> right? There's nothing illegal about it that I can see. Um, the competition regulator added that it will, quote, also consider whether it is appropriate to investigate the conduct of anyone else in relation to the matter, unquote. Uh, dynamic ticket pricing sees prices surge in real time as demand rises, similar to airline tickets or Uber. Live Nation has previously argued that the program addresses the issue of scalpers buying up tickets at face value and then selling them at a higher price point. Wait. They have? I got to click this link. They have? That's their argument? That it reduces scalping? That's why they do it? Um, uh, I just clicked an I just clicked another article that might explain it, but we'll, we might come back to this later if we have time. Uh, I don't see how that would be the case. <laughs> I, but I'm open to the argument, but uh, I don't see how how would that how would that prevent scalping? What am I missing? Maybe I'm missing something. Again, I'm trying to be fair. All right. Uh, the CMA said on Thursday that, quote, this is not the first time that the use of dynamic pricing has raised concerns uh, among fans of live sporting events and music events, unquote. According to the CMA, while the practice is, quote, not automatically unlawful, it may breach consumer protection or competition law in certain circumstances, unquote. Sarah Cardell, chief executive of the CMA, said, quote, it's important that fans are treated fairly when they buy tickets, which is why we've launched this investigation. It's clear that many people felt they had a bad experience and were surprised by the price of their tickets at checkout. We want to hear from fans who went through the process and may have encountered issues so that we can investigate whether existing consumer protection law has been breached. By the way, that's something, there's more to the statement, but that's something we can all relate to, right? You go to buy tickets and... And again, I, you know, this doesn't, I don't think this really happens with smaller ticketing agencies or smaller uh, tours, but um, you go to buy tickets from Live Nation and, and you go to check out and the ticket price is suddenly much higher, not, not necessarily because of dynamic pricing, but all these, all these fees and taxes and everything. And you thought you were going to spend a hundred dollars on a ticket and all of a sudden it's, you get to check out and it's 150 and you're like, where did this other... <laughs> I mean, no, I'm not even exaggerating, right? It'll be that much more. It's it's wild, and and there's like all these fees, and you know, there's uh, you know, there's just any any fee you can you can imagine. <laughs> I don't remember too. It's been a while since I've even bought tickets from Ticketmaster. I don't know. Uh, I don't remember if it even itemizes it for you. Does it? Maybe if, if somebody's in the chat room, I should take a breath and say hello to everybody in the chat room. But um. 
does it even itemize it for you or does it just say taxes and fees and it's this huge additional number that you weren't expecting or you were expecting if you buy tickets from Ticketmaster regularly? But um, Alex Whiteley is in the uh, chat room, our, one of our friends from the UK. Oh, says touting is a term used for people selling tickets on for higher prices. Okay. Um, oh, Miriam Banish also joins us in the Facebook live chat. Yeah, thank you for that, uh, Alex. Uh, I, we, we don't use that uh, term in the... Uh, we, we, we don't use uh, touting. Uh, uh, we have a call. Let's uh, see who we have here. Hi, welcome to Matt, uh, Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Hey, it's Charles. Hey, Charles Richardson. How are you? I've been better, but hanging in there. What's what, what's going on? I should, uh, by the way, Charles, I should just tell you up front, we only have a few minutes because we have a guest calling in uh, at yeah. uh, 10 a.m., but uh, what's on your yeah, mind? I want, to try, I, I want to try to make it quick. Number one, Ticketmaster, Live Nation, all these other, they're all scam artists. Uh, and the fact that they're going with this, this pricing technique is really embarrassing. Listen, if I buy a seat in Section 101 in the first 10 rows, it should be one price. The next 10 rows is another price. There should not be any alternative pricing. But they're scam artists because you got this ticket surcharge fee, you got this fee, that fee. The damn fees cost more than the damn ticket sometimes. So I think it's all just a really big joke, if you want my honest opinion. Well, it is. It is true. I mean, you get to the uh, you get to the end of the process, and and the the price is it just all of a sudden it's yeah. Sometimes the fees they're almost as much, or, or perhaps even more uh, than than the ticket itself. It's wild. It is. It is. It, it's embarrassing to buy tickets nowadays because everything's done online, and they're just reaping the benefits. The fact that they do alternate pricing for scalpers. Are you kidding me? Please that such a lame excuse it's almost like the glove didn't fit your honor so i'm out of here all right bye charles good to hear from you my friend take care all right that was uh charles richardson of course uh from the charles richardson show although i think he's taking a little bit of a break from that right now but uh good to hear from charles yeah i mean i'm not gonna go uh, i i relate to his frustration certainly i think most of us probably do i'm not gonna go so far as to say that it's a scam because you know, to uh, to use that word, I would say a, a scam would be, in my mind, if you go to buy the tickets and you, after you've checked out, you end up with a charge on your credit card or your debit or whatever that's higher than what you thought it was going to be. You do know what the final price is before you click that to, to pay that and make that purchase. But... It is true. So, so I would not, I would not technically call it a scam. I, I would, I would disagree with Charles on that. Although I'm certainly sympathetic with the broader point that he was making. And again, uh, and I, I think a lot of us can relate to that frustration. And it is interesting. Like you, you really, and this absolutely, I don't think anyone can argue it. It is definitely designed the process, unless it's changed. Again, I haven't bought tickets from Ticketmaster in quite a while. So unless the process has changed. It is designed so that you don't see that final number until the very end. So you're going through the, the entire process of picking your seats and everything. You're going through that entire process, unless you have bought tickets recently, right? If, if, it's, if you go to a lot of shows, none of this will surprise you. But, but if you don't go to a lot of shows, you're going through that entire process with one price in your mind. And then you get to that final screen and that's where it shows you all these fees and you're like, oh, uh, this ticket just doubled in price. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Isaac Banks is also in the uh, chat room. Uh, Alex Whiteley says, uh, people had to sign into their Ticketmaster, uh, wait to be accepted into a ballot, which took hours for some. Then some were told that they were going to have to pay upwards of 400 pounds per ticket. Yeah. I mean, it, again, I don't know that I would call it a scam per se, but it certainly is. Um, 
I think we can all understand why, uh, from a just from a consumer standpoint, you might have a pretty bad taste in your mouth after going through that, <laughs> right?